Hi, quick video on showing you how to work up potential skin calcifications on mammography. So skin calcifications are very common. Um, they're typically round or loosened center, which are pretty much pathognomonic, um, generally scattered, but they can be more localized within scars or the periareola area or the inframammary fold. Um, sometimes they can be more atypical looking, more um, concerning, a little more pleomorphic or coarse heterogeneous, and they can be more focally grouped. So just to show you a couple of classic examples, here they are within the periareola area. As I said, it's a very common area for skin calcs. And here's just a screen um, shot magnification view showing you these ones that are um, a little more lucent um, or round here. And so these lucent ones, as I said, are pretty much pathognomonic for skin calcifications. Here's a different patient. In this case, they are more scattered, so they wouldn't be particularly concerning anyway. And again, on the screen mag, you can see that many of these are loose and centered. Now, thermosynthesis has given us a great tool because most times we can tell that calcifications are in the skin because they're in either the first few frames or the last few frames. In other words, they're in the part of the breast which is compressed against either the paddle or the image receptor. So here's an example of calcs. Here, a nice little grouping of pretty round calcs. Um, you can see here that they are typically within this sort of what I call chicken skin type appearance, which is classic of the appearance of the uh, dermis as it's compressed. Um, and here they're on frame one of 76. So these are skin calcs. We don't need to worry about them. There is something to be a little cautious of, however. Um, there is a slight undershoot and overshoot of the number of tomosynthesis slices such they over to ensure that they have complete coverage of the breasts. You can see here they just kind of go out into either the compression plate or the image receptor a little bit. And so that means that those skin calcs may not be on slice one or the last slice. They may be in up to the first maybe five slices. Also, Whilst you're always going to look at both projections, because if their calcs are not against, you know, one surface here, they may be against the other surface and you can tell it, there may be calcs that just somehow don't get compressed against either skin surface. And those we may need to do a little bit more working up on. So here's just to show you that undershoot and overshoot phenomenon. Um, in this case, in this patient, this group of skin calcifications are on frame five, but they are clearly within the skin. You can see other skin type calcifications here. You can see that chicken skin type appearance. And these calcs here are actually on frame uh, 50 of 57 in this case in the right MLO view. So in those ones that we can't be sure about, we have to do the dreaded tangential views, which I personally love, but apparently not all my technologists love. And I'm going to talk through how we do those. So um, you're not going to see these calcifications because it's a screenshot, but the interpreting radiologist has just marked a group of calcifications in two views that were new and they needed further uh, additional workup. So here's our typical MAG-CC and uh, MAG-ML views. I can just put my little magnifier doohickey on here and you can see these kind of funky looking calcs. And you're thinking, well, are those fine pleomorphic? Are they dystrophic? Are they grouped round calcs? You know, not 100% sure, but definitely need some further workup. You could even sort of wonder if they've got a little bit of a linear orientation to at least some of them. So... This is how we do the tangential views. The most important thing is you need to decide what you think is the closest surface. In other words, if they're in the skin, what part of the skin are they in? Are they in the top of the breast, the bottom of the breast, the lateral aspect of the breast, or the medial aspect of the breast? This is the surface that you're going to place your alphanumeric grid against. And this is key to the whole thing. If you put the grid against the wrong surface of the breast, you're not going to be able to show if they're in the skin and you may falsely call skin calcs, um, not skin calcs. So you're going to set the patient up in either the CC or the true lateral um, projection, depending on whether you think they're above or below or medial or lateral with the grid against that skin surface. Okay. You're going to take an image and then you're going to place a BB over the calcs. I'm going to show you this step by step in a sec and do a tangential view. All right. So come back to these calcs that we had here. And just to remind you, they're up here. 
and they are um, almost invisible on the true lateral view. Here they are, um, right here. Um, and we decided, looking at all our different views, that we thought they were closest to the medial surface of the breast. In other words, we thought they were in here. So we have our patient set up with a medial lateral. So the grid, we thought they were closest to the medial, so the grid against the medial surface of the, the breast, and the image receptor is against the lateral surface of the breast, and here are our calcs. So you're gonna work out what coordinates they're at. In this case, they're at E10, putting our little uh, cursor on, on the uh, thermosynthesis unit. Here they are again. We put our BB on E10 and take an image and we can confirm that yes, indeed, our calcs and our BB are now overlying. The patient is then turned such that the BB is completely, and the skin surface under the BB is perpendicular to the paddle. And that is super important. It doesn't really matter where, what projection that's in. The tech can just move the breast to the, they think they can get that best tangential view. And in this patient, here's our BB right on the edge of the skin. Damn, unfortunately, our calcifications are below the level of the skin. So these are not skin calcifications. And they went on to a stereotactic biopsy and were shown to be dystrophic. Just a couple of examples of ones that were skin calcs. You can see here the calcs right within the dermis, the BB's over it. This is just the tangential view. And then one last patient, and 